Let us take a matrix A and we'll take, we'll use our notation A11, A12, A21, A22. Okay. Two by two matrix. We define the determinant of A. Um, another symbol for the determinant is a straight line up and down. We will be using that symbol. We'll be using both interchangeably. A12, A21, A22. So it depends on what it is that you're talking about. You use the lines when we want to specify the entries. We use this more functional notation, determinant of this matrix A, when we want to simply speak about it in the abstract. So we define it as A11, times A12 minus A12 times A21. The pattern is this times that minus this times that. Again, A11 along the main diagonal, this times that minus that times this, including the signs. Let's do the same for a three by three, and then we'll do some examples. So let's say that B is our 3 by 3. So we have B11, B12, B13, B21, B22, B23, B31, B32, B33. Linear algebra is notationally intensive. Okay, now. The determinant of B is equal to, okay, I'm going to write it out, uh, and then we'll talk about an actual pattern by, that you can use. B11 times B22 times B23 plus B12 times B23 times B31 plus B13 times B21 times B32 minus B11 times B23 times B32 minus B12 times B21 times B33 minus B13, B22, B31. Here is the pattern. There are different ways to think about this. And I know that many of you have, of course, seen determinants before uh, back in high school and perhaps in other areas of mathematics, perhaps in some college courses in calculus or something like that. Um, here is the general pattern. Notice we have some that are plus, 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 and some that are minus, minus, minus. This first one is B11, B22, B33. Going from top left to bottom right, multiply everything down this way. The second entry, just move over and go down again to the right. B12 times B23, but since you have nothing over here, just go down to this one because you need three entries. Notice each one of these has three, 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 three. You need three factors in the multiplication. So it's this times this times this. Now you go to the next one. B13, there's nothing here, but you need three of them. So you go here and here. So it's B13, B21 times B32. That takes care of the plus part. Now let's deal with the minus part. Go back to the B11. Well, B11, now go try going down to the left. Well, there's nothing here at the left, but you need three terms. So it's B11, B23, B32. Go to the next one over. B12, B21, there's nothing here, but there's one here, B33. B13, B22, B31. There are different kind of patterns that you can come up with 
this is simply the best pattern that I personally have come up with to work with three by threes. Um, again, uh, you've probably seen determinants before, so whatever pattern you come up with is fine. I think this works out the best simply because you're going to the right, positive, you're going down to the left, negative, if that makes sense. So those have positive signs. When you're moving in this direction, you have negative signs. And of course, in this, you have a three by three. Each term has to have three things multiplied by each other. Okay, let's do some examples. Go back to, actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna try blue ink. Let's define A as one, two, three, two, one, three, three, one, two. Okay, so let's do our pattern. Let's see, let's go ahead and put something like that. And we'll say the determinant of A. Okay, one times one times two. It's two, okay? Plus two times three times three. Two times three is six. Six times three is 18. Plus three times two times one, six. Okay, now minus one times three times one, three. Minus two times two times two. Two times two is four, that's four is eight. Close this eight off. Minus three times one times three, minus nine. When we add them all up, Hopefully my arithmetic is correct. Please check me. You should get six. So again, positive this way, negative that way. Okay. Let's do a two by two. Let's say B is equal to four, negative seven, two, negative three. So now we have some negative entries. Okay. The determinant of B is equal to this times this, four times negative three is negative 12, minus this times this. This times this is negative 14. The minus sign has to stay. So it's negative 12 minus a negative 14, minus 12 plus 14, it is equal to two, okay? So these signs here, this plus here, plus here, plus here, negative, 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 they always stay there. It doesn't matter what these numbers are. If this is negative, then a negative times a negative is positive. But you have to have three positive terms in a three by three. You have to have three negative terms in a three by three. Negative in this case, Does it just depends on what these numbers are. But those negative signs and these positive signs have to be there. They're not part of the arithmetic. They're part of the definition of the determinant. Okay, let's see here. Let's go over some properties of the determinants. Just like we did properties of matrices, we'll talk about some properties of determinants. So let A be an n by n matrix, okay? And then the determinant of the A transpose is the determinant of A. In other words, if I take A, take the transpose of it, and if I, then I take the determinant, it's the same as the determinant of A. No change. If you have a matrix and you interchange two rows or two columns, this way or this way, of the matrix, the determinant changes sign. So it goes from positive to negative, negative to positive. Positive to negative, negative to positive. If two rows or columns of a matrix are equal, then the determinant equals zero. Nice and simple. If a row or a column of A is entirely zeros, then the determinant, again, is equal to zero. If a single row or a column is multiplied by a non-zero constant, R, non-zero, then the determinant is multiplied by R. The whole determinant is multiplied by R if one row or column is just multiplied by R. Let's do an example. We'll let A equal to one, two, three, one, five, three, and two, eight, six. Okay, we wanna find the determinant of A. Uh, in this case, I'm actually gonna write it with this symbol. Um, 
and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to rewrite it. 1, 2, 3, 1, 5, 3, 2, 8, 6. In this case, using some of the properties, particularly the one where we say if we multiply by a particular constant, um, I'm going to use something that's going to be akin to factoring out that you're used to from algebra. That's why I use this. I want you to see all of the entries. That's equal to, so notice this is 2, 8, 6. You can divide this by 2, which means I can actually factor out a 2 from here. So I'm going to put a 2, and I leave the other rows the same, 1, 5, 3, and this becomes 1, 4, 3. Okay. I can factor out a 3 here, too. So I have 2 times 3, 1, 2, 1. I can factor out a 3 from this column. 1, 5, 1, 1, 4, 1. Okay. Now notice, I have a column of 1s and another column of 1s, two columns that are the same. So now the determinant is equal to 2 times 3, and when I have something or two columns are the same, the determinant is 0. So, saved myself a lot of problems. I didn't have to go through that whole strange this diagonal, that diagonal, this entry, that entry, positive, negative. I used the properties of determinants to actually make my life a lot easier, and I was able to find the determinant of a 3 by 3 pretty quickly, just by some standard algebraic manipulation. Okay.